<laughs> it just melts everything. Double swing for the win. What's up guys, it's Zyger here, and the patch for Diablo 4 is finally here, and that means the Double Swing Barbarian has arrived. I think this is the best Barbarian spec now because it just got a huge boost to damage. So this build basically can do everything. It's got damage, it's got survivability, it's got utility, and the seasonal mechanic, Malignant Hearts, make it even stronger. So this is going to be an all-encompassing build where I go over the gear, skills, gems, expertise, paragon boards, skill tree, basically everything you need to know to play this build, including the malignant hearts to use. So let's just dive right in, starting with the abilities. So we got Rallying Cry here, we got War Cry, we have Challenging Shout, and we're using Ground Stomp here, and we'll explain why in a bit. But we're going with Lunging Strike for a Generator and Double Swing, obviously. So let's get into the gear right here for the helm. I've got a Mitigation Helm. You can go with Crowd Control Duration instead of Berserking. Both are good to have here, but you really want cooldown armor and life. I have the Disobedience Aspect, which ramps up my armor. Super important one to have for almost any build in the game. Really great. Mitigation chest here, it's imprinted with the might aspect, which grants me damage reduction. For five seconds, you can get it up to six when you're using basic skills. You'll be alternating basic and core skills a lot in this build, so this is a heck of a lot of additional damage reduction that's really important. On the item itself, it's good to get total armor, maximum life, damage reduction while fortified, damage reduction while from close enemies, also regular damage reduction is really good too. For the gloves, we want a gloves with crit strike chance, lucky hit, double swing of four ranks, and attack speed. This is a really good gloves, probably one of my best items. And the imprint is retribution. Distant enemies have a chance to be stunned for two seconds when they hit you. This build takes advantage of doing extra damage to stunned enemies. And this amplifies that damage too. I got 16%, it can go up to 20 with the pants, we want another mitigation pants here. So armor, damage reduction while fortified, damage reduction, max life, damage reduction while close are all good here. And it's imprinted with Numbing Wrath, which gives me fortify for each for fury generated at maximum fury. You're going to go off the charts with a fury generation here, so this is going to add a lot of survivability. With the boots, we have Ghost Walker. This is going to make me unstoppable. Um, well, when I'm unstoppable, I'm going to run faster and freely move through enemies. It's just a speed boost, but on it we have movement speed, berserk duration, movement speed after killing elite as a boost, and the fury cost reduction. Instead of berserking duration, you can also get the one that gives you plus damage reduction um, to uh, when you're injured. That one's good too. For all the weapons, the, the two-handers are stat sticks, so for the mace, and the two-handed sword, you want to have strength, uh, vulnerable damage, critical strike damage, and either close or core. This one has core, and this one has close. Both of these are rolled very well. You want them to um, basically be all as high as possible as rolls, but you don't have to worry about the item power as long as it's ancestral. But what you're looking for is two maces here. So you want two one-handed maces. You want the same stats on those. I don't have them perfectly rolled, but you do want strength, vulnerable damage, crit strike damage, and close damage or core. That last one can be either or. I don't have them perfectly rolled, but my first weapon has edge masters, just does more damage when I have more primary resource. And you're gonna have a ton in this build again, as I said before. And then the other one, I have the expectant, and that just ramps up the damage of my next core skill after using my basic skill for a lot. Um, for three times, it basically maxes it out when I have a 10% here. Just have nine right now. But there's a few other options here. You can also use the one that gives you more damage as you stand still because our primary spender is double swing and you stand still while you use it. But this one's good too. For the two-handers, the first one I have for aspect is limitless rage again just gives me more damage for my core skill and the two-handed slash has the accelerating aspect 
Um, ramps up my attack speed. You're going to want a lot of attack speed in this build, and that helps with your fury generation and your damage of double swing. Really ramps up um, and scales with that. For the amulet here, I have cooldown damage reduction while fortified, three ranks to counter offensive and fury reduction. Um, alternatives here to counter offensive, you could also get like a plus damage, plus strength works here as an alternative to the damage reduction while fortified plus defensive ranks is also really good there but this is a pretty good amulet it is um, it has the aspect of smiting which gives me increased critical chance against injured enemies that's a huge bonus and then also while I'm healthy you gain 60 percent increased crowd control duration which is super important because we're not using wrath of the berserker so this allows you to get out of CC for a lot um, of times that you would otherwise um, be in it. Um, we basically sacrifice Wrath of the Berserker for Ground Slam, so this ramps that up. Uh, ring, Both rings, you want to have Vulnerable Damage, Crit Strike Damage, Crit Strike Chance, and Resource Generation. So I have two rings that have essentially the same roles, and you want both of the Shout Aspects. So the ones that gain you um, four Fury per second while active. Thankfully I have four and I don't have less. You want a four there. And then the other one is the Bold Chieftains. That's the one where um, whenever you use a shout, its cooldown is reduced by 1.5 seconds. I have up to 1.9 per nearby enemy. Both of these in combination are going to generate you fury and make sure your shouts are up as much as possible. All right, for expertise, we are using the one-handed maces to do damage. So we are taking the two-handed axe expertise. This increases your damage to vulnerable enemies and your crit strike chance against vulnerable enemies. It's super good. Um, and gems. We want green gems in the weapons. Just amplifies your damage a lot because basically vulnerable damage, um, anything that you do to vulnerable enemies just um, gets boosted quite a bit. And for the armor, we want blue. Just gives us more damage reduction while fortified. And this uh, build packs a ton of fortification into it. Let's go to the skill tree. So skill tree here, I've already talked about it a bit. But lunging strike, we're upgrading that once. To combat lunging strike makes us berserk whenever we crit. This is a really good... Uh, ability to kind of keep your berserk up which does gives you a lot more damage and movement speed for here we got double swing and core ramp it up to the max and then we're upgrading it to violent double swing this one makes us gain fury when we knock enemies down we're doing that in a few ways that i'll describe in a second and also um, it makes enemies vulnerable we're not taking pressure point in this build so this is one of our ways to make enemies vulnerable the other one being the exploit glyph which i'll touch in in a second ground stomp here um, stuns enemies for a few seconds that is going to make them have the stun condition we have some abilities to do more damage but it also increases the duration and generates fury so this is a multi-purpose ability that's really good and it's taking the place of what you would have wrath of the berserker and other builds rallying cry boosted up to the max um, gives us more damage and makes us unstoppable and then we're boosting it through this to tactical and tactical just gives us more fury and resource generation we want max ranks to challenging shout upgraded up to tactical so we're getting a little bit more fury there with war cry just putting one point into it and then making sure it gives us berserking and then um, getting a damage bonus through power war cry we want three booming voice, and then we're doing one raid leader and three guttural yell. So this gives us more damage reduction. If you have really good damage reduction already, you can take some points out of here and put them in either raid leader or increase your movement speed if you want. But I'm going one to three right now, but I'm kind of toying with this and might tweak it a little bit. Aggressive resistance three, more damage while berserking, and then prolific fury up to rank three. This increases our fury generation by quite a bit. This one was buffed in the patch too. Um, Pit Fighter one point and then three ranks to no mercy just gives us more critical strike chance against immobilized, stunned, or slowed enemies. We're going to stun the heck out of all the enemies. Everything gets stunned uh, essentially, so that's a big boost. One point into thick skin. It gives us a little bit 
fortification, but it's really to get ranks and counteroffensive, which gives us much more damage when we're fortified for over 50% of our maximum life, which is almost all the time I have that up. Down here in ultimate, we got three ranks in wallop because we're using um, bludgeon one-handers. Just gives us more damage if the enemy is stunned or vulnerable. Enemies are always going to be stunned or vulnerable, essentially. And then three concussion. This is where skills using bludgeon weapons have up to a 30% chance to stun enemies for three seconds. So we're doing, we're having a bigger chance to stun there. And then down here we have unbridled rage, basically the best ability you can get to deal damage as a barb. Right, let's go to Paragon board. Um, for Paragon board, if you want the specific nodes that I take, check the description below. I'll have a link to the build there where you can see the specific nodes. But I'm just going to cover the glyphs I'm using uh, on a step-by-step -step basis. So the first one we're using is Territorial. Gives us more damage to close enemies and damage reduction to close enemies. Very good glyph there. Second glyph, we have Marshall. And this improves our shouts, so our cooldowns are being refreshed more, plus gives us some bonus stats there. Going up to the next one, we have Exploit. This is in almost all builds. Helps make enemies vulnerable and does more damage to vulnerable enemies. Going up to the next board, we have Imbiber. This does more damage while healthy. And, you know, if your survivability is good, which this one has very good survivability, this is going to do more damage and our potion is going to do more healing. Next one is Wrath, more critical strike damage and skills that critical strike generate three fury. Our crit is going to be off the charts. We're going to be generating a ton of fury, not only through this, but through other things too. And then the last one is Undaunted. It gives us more damage while we're fortified. We are all the time, essentially, and more damage reduction the more fortified we have. So again, if you want the specific nodes, check the build link below. Now let's get to the seasonal mechanic because the malignant hearts in this build are super important. The basis of this is that you want um, your jewelry to have a combination of one orange, one purple, and one anything else because we're going to put the Wrathful Heart generally in the amulet because it's usually the hardest to roll. We are using the Barber Wrathful Heart. This is a super important item which basically um, has enemies absorb your damage at first and then it unleashes in kind of a burst that does extra damage. The cool thing about this with Double Swing is naturally Double Swing doesn't have that much capacity to do AoE damage, but with Barber you're doing a lot of damage to multiple enemies and when they burst, that's going to do a lot of damage to the surrounding enemies. So it's really kind of going to cause explosions, which make Double Swing really strong and better than it is usually. For this ring, we have the Vicious Heart that gains us critical strike damage, but our non-critical strikes deal less damage. That's not too bad of a trade-off, given that we're almost always critting, and really in this game, you're not doing that much damage unless you crit otherwise, so this is a super strong one. And then the purple slash pink one um, is the one where we have Devious Heart to ch cause knockback, so uh, or knockdown, so we cause the knockdown on enemies, and that amplifies the damage that we do um, or the fury generation that we get from double swing. So when enemies are knocked down, not only are we mitigating damage because we're not taking damage at that point, but we're also gaining fury here. You'll see that your, your fury will spike up a lot. So those are the three malignant hearts to use. You can have the colors essentially swapped. So, you know, you could have even a blue amulet if you want, put the wrathful in that, but you have to have one orange, one purple and one of any other all right um that's basically it this build is super strong i'm going to show you how to use it in a nightmare dungeon so let me show you how to do it all right here's a nightmare dungeon we got a 96 going basically i'm doing basic attacks stunning enemies using ground stomp using challenging shout to make them weaker and then basically just cleaning up Look at all that burst damage from Double Swing now. If you need some survivability, just back up until your shouts are back. And then go in, slam, do the challenging shout, and explode stuff with Barber. 
This is how you're going to ba basically clear everything. And we do so much damage and knockdowns and stuns that we should be able to stay alive through most of it. Just collecting some loot here, going back. More double swings. You can see I'm doing multi-million dollar. <laughs> million dollar. Million hits. And we move on. That's basically it. You want to save the ground slam for elites if you can. And your challenging shout obviously should always be used when you're around many enemies. So that's basically it. We knock down so much, we stun so much. And their survivability is actually really good with this. So that's basically the build. Now I'm going to show you boss gameplay. All right, boss gameplay. We got a 96 in Horfrost here. Let's see if we can melt it down. Got my Berserking up. They buffed the boss's health in this patch, but it's still not too bad because they buffed Double Swing also. Knocking him down with ground slam and just slamming away with double swing. May want to make sure that Berserking's up, but there you have it. So this build can definitely do Nightmare Dungeon 100s, even close to at a speed level. All right, guys, one more note here too is that instead of the dual mace setup like I'm using, you can also use a Ramaladni's Magnum Opus for one of your weapons. This item does increase damage per point of fury you have, so that's a nice bonus, but you lose two fury every second. Blizzard's also buffed this item this patch, so instead of the guaranteed physical damage roll, future Ramalani's Magnus Opuses that drop will have a guaranteed vulnerable damage roll. So they made this item better in the patch. I'm going to have to collect it again to do some testing, but I like the dual mace setup because of what you get from this. You get a lot of berserking uptime. So that's about it. Um, if you know of any way to improve this build, please let me know in a comment below if you have any suggestions. What do you like about this build also? Let me know. Also, like and subscribe this video and keep tuned to my channel for more Diablo 4 and retro gaming content.